Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to discuss the announcement today by Unique at Interdrone 2019 for their brand new drone, the Mantis G. Now, you can probably tell that I'm not at the show, and I obviously don't have a brand new shiny Mantis G product in front of me that I can actually show you, but I still want to talk about this drone because I feel like Unique has put together an interesting package with this new release that fits pretty well into the consumer drone market space, and I've also had, for some time, a strong suspicion that Unique would release a product like this sometime before Christmas. I actually thought it would be later in the year. That's why I haven't talked about it on the channel, but here they go today. They announced it at Inner Drone. So before I get too deep into it, I don't have the drone. So what this discussion is based on primarily is their public specifications, all the research I've done over the last couple of months for FCC filings, trademark and patent applications, and the conversations we had with them kind of behind the scenes at CES this year. And I really beat them up a lot in their booth. I, I took them to task for their last release, the Manus Q, and sort of ask them a lot of hard questions about where's the stabilized gimbal? What about this? What about the artificial intelligence? When are you going to come out with a drone that's a little more sophisticated? And it was interesting because the guys in the booth knew a lot. And they weren't talking a lot. So every time I'd ask them a question about, okay, you've got image stabilization built in that's digital. Why didn't you go to a gimbal? They would smirk and they would smile. And they kept saying this one phrase that's repeating in my head, just wait, just wait. And I'm thinking, okay, Unique has built some really impressive drones. They're big drones. The Typhoons are phenomenal drones. They're gigantic. They've got a lot of intelligence. They fly really far. What are you doing in that middle space? And they kept saying, just wait. So I, here I am waiting. So background conversations aside, I kind of got the feeling that there was something coming, probably based on that original product they had that was going to be more sophisticated. And that's exactly what we're getting with this Manus G. So what I'm going to talk about today are the specifications, again, all the research I've done and those background conversations, just to give you a feel for what this product looks like, how it compares to other products in the market. And then once I get my hands on it, I'll definitely go through it in much more detail and compare it to other drones. Now, as frustrating as it is, that they announced the product today. They haven't announced a release date yet, and I haven't gotten an invite to test the product. So Unique, if you're watching this clip, get in touch with me. I want to test that product and put it up against the others because I know I sound like a bigot when I talk about DJI or talk about Autel or Parrot. I fly everybody's drones, and I'm extremely fair when I do comparisons side by side, and I think this product has got some potential. The other thing I will tell you, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge fan of competition in this market space. I feel like any company that's going to release a new product into this market market today deserves a decent look, deserves somebody taking a look at it and comparing it to other drones and pointing out what's popular and what's good about it and what's innovative about it because competition is the strongest force in the marketplace to drive other competitors to be smarter and develop better products to keep their prices competitive and sort of not let have any one company be a dominant market force in that space. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I was a fan of GoPro when they came out with the Karma product. Turns out that product didn't work out really well, but I wish they would get back into the drone space just to keep everybody else honest. Okay, so enough about that. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the drone. So we spent quite a bit of time in the booth, like I'd mentioned at CES with the guys from Unique, and I had that Mantis Q in my hand the entire time, sort of holding it like this going, it's a cool drone. As an engineer, there's so much more I could have done with this drone. Like what? Stabilized gimbals are not that complicated anymore. You could definitely do that. What's going on there? What about the features of what if artificial intelligent features? Like, can I do selfies? Can I do loops? Some of that stuff was in there. Not a lot of it was in there. And it's based on, their drones are based on an open operating system for drone development. So it's kind of an easier lift than developing something from scratch like Hotel's doing or DJI's doing. So those features are kind of out there in the marketplace in that open community. So I really took them to task. And again, all I kept saying was, just wait, just wait. And I'm waiting. So here we are. We got the drone today. All right. So specification wise, again, I don't have the product in front of you. I could have cut a cardboard box up to be about the right size, but I compared it to the Mavic Air because it's really, really close in both its folded size and its unfolded size. So the Mavic Air is a little bit smaller. Uh, its weight on the Mavic Air is 430 grams. The new Manage G is 505 grams. So it's a little bit of a heavier drone, but physically it's only a tiny bit bigger than this when it's folded or when it's open. So this is a pretty good representation of what it's going to look like when you get the drone. Now, I think Unique, like a lot of companies, have figured out that this kind of package is the perfect package for consumers. They realize that even though the Phantom products are great and the Inspire products are used for commercial purposes, and even the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom are used for kind of commercial purposes, having something that folds up smaller than those guys that I can put in a little protective package, slide it in my suitcase, and take it with me on vacation and not have to worry about all this big bulky stuff along with me is a home run. So this Managed G product is really out there to serve that market space. And I think the features they built into it, even though you can have that kind of my dad can beat up your dad's specification fight with other drones that are out there, 
Uh, I think a lot of the stuff they built into it is absolutely necessary, and I think a lot of the things that people are inevitably going to pick on really don't matter that much, and I'll go through those in a minute. All right, so let's talk more about the drone. Physically, again, weight-wise, we know it's the same, roughly, and we know the physical size is about the same, roughly. I like to talk about the features that you're going to care about, and those are typically things like how far can it fly, how long can it fly, how good is the camera, how good is the stabilization, what kind of artificial intelligence features does it have built into it, are they breaking new ground with it, are they sort of cloning something else, or building in features that somebody else has out there already. So at the outset, let me say that there's very little in the drone that they've released that's earth shattering. Most of it is sort of catch up stuff in the market space, but that's okay because the one thing we don't know, and this is really the big question mark that I've got to get an answer to is the release price. Because when I talk about these features in a couple of minutes, it's got a lot of features packed into it. It's a wonderful product feature wise, but if they come out with a price point here, we're all going to moan. If they come out with a price point here, they've got a home run on their hands. So competitively, I'm not going to give you specific numbers, but I'm thinking if it comes in at that $800 mark, I don't know if it's going to really move in the market space, but if they hit that five, $400 price mark, this thing's going to fly off the shelf. So just if Unique's watching this, I don't know what your market target market is, but if this thing hits around that $500 mark, I think you got a, a winner on your hands. All right, specification wise, uh, it flies, it's based on Wi-Fi technology, so it's a modified Wi-Fi. It'll go about a mile and a half. It's based on 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz. It'll do frequency switching between the two, which is a pretty sophisticated feature set. That's great, and I know a lot of people will say, well, gee, that's not that great. We've got drones that'll fly five miles. Well, I wanna fly five miles. I don't need a drone to fly five miles because in the US, you've got this visual line of sight limitation, which means I can't really fly that drone over the horizon and to the ends of the earth yet, even though it'll fly five miles, because legally, I've gotta keep it in line of sight. What I like about that mile and a half distance means that when I'm flying it, if it's within a half a mile of me, which is about as far maybe that I can see a drone of this size, I know that that signal strength, because it can fly a mile and a half, means that it's well strong enough that I'm not going to have interference or dropping video or choppy audio or video coming back from the drone. It means I've got a really strong signal with that mile and a half potential in it to fly it in close and not have any problems with that signal degradation. So that's plenty for me. The Wi-Fi technology doesn't bother me whatsoever because now they've fixed it. It's not nailed to 2.4 or 5.8. It's got the ability to switch between them. I think it's got 10 channels of connectivity, which means they're looking at the bands that are out there and picking the strongest bands, probably doing that frequency hopping to make sure that the signal's strong enough. Now again, I'll test all this once I get the drone. All right, so that having said, it flies pretty far. It flies pretty long. It's got a, a maximum flight time about 33 minutes, which is pretty much the standard nowadays. Some of the bigger drones fly about 30 minutes, 33 minutes, give or take. I mean, nobody flies it to a dead battery anyway. So if I get 33 minutes out of a battery, that means I'm probably going to fly it about 25, maybe 28 minutes pushing the envelope, and then I'm going to land it. So that's plenty of flight time for me. And I like the fact that it's small enough, which means the 3S battery that's in there is not going to be terribly expensive. So I can pick a couple extra batteries up and fly it even longer if I want to do that. All right, the next thing I'll talk about is the sort of the capabilities of the camera because this is super important the reason you buy a drone the reason i buy a drone is to fly it and have fun to explore areas that i wouldn't normally see which is great i can fly over a forest or river or bay and see things that i couldn't see normally but i also want the camera to be good enough so i can take pictures and i can take video so it does 4k video it'll do 13 megapixels on the pictures it's got a one over 3.06 so it's a little bit smaller i think than the mavic air camera this is a 1 over 2.3 so it's it's about the same size I, we can argue specs all day long i think it's close enough where you're going to get the exact footage you need from a video perspective and a picture perspective so that doesn't scare me the one thing that did scare me and this is super important and i was really hoping it had it and it does have it is a stabilized gimbal it's a mechanical gimbal so the old one the mantis g i'm sorry mantis q didn't have that what they had was a fixed camera that had in camera stabilization. So it was digital stabilization, which meant they took a bigger picture and then shrunk it down to actually move it around to give you that digital image stabilization. The new one, the Manus G, has a stabilized gimbal. Now the question mark in that space is they say stabilized gimbal, but when I'm looking at it, I'm not sure if it's a two axis gimbal or a three axis gimbal. It really doesn't matter that much to me because the two axis gimbal will do a pretty good job of stabilizing it. And then the third axis will be digitally stabilized. And I keep going back to the Parrot Bebop product, Bebop 2 that came out uh, years ago. They had no gimbal stabilization whatsoever, and that was one of the most stable images in the air of any drone that I've ever flown, especially at that price range. So I'm pretty sure that the Manus G, even with a stabilized gimbal setup, if it's a two, uh, two axis stabilized gimbal, that the gimbal stabilization will make up for the third axis. And I could be wrong, it might be a three axis gimbal and good for us if it is. So anyway, it's got a stabilized gimbal, which means you're gonna get buttery smooth pictures up in the air, you're gonna get great footage, camera's decent enough where you're not gonna have to worry about it. So it flies far, it flies long, it takes great pictures. All right, what else you got for me? 
Well, artificial intelligence or those sort of automated modes that the products do are becoming more and more important because a lot of consumers, quite honestly, don't want to deal with learning how to fly a quad. They want to sort of unfold it, power it up, throw it up in the air, hit a button on their on their smartphone and have it circle them or have it fly back away from them or have them chase them when they're driving their bike or something. So the automated intelligence or artificial intelligence that's built into the drone really makes a big difference. And my prediction, this is kind of outside of this conversation, my prediction is drone companies are trying to get away from controllers completely. The day is going to be coming very soon where the drone companies are just going to sell you a drone that has so many smarts built into it that between your cell phone, you can just bark a command at your cell phone or hit a button on your cell phone and have it do all these amazing things and eliminate the controller completely. We're not quite there yet with the Manage G, but they built a ton of automated control into it, including things like voice commands. Now, that may seem today like a bit gimmicky or kind of a parlor trick where you're yelling at your phone saying come home or fly away or spin around but as that gets better I think that voice command aspect of it could be a really interesting thing and that's something we haven't seen on the DJI products yet some other products have played around with it I'm a little on the fence whether that feature is going to be something that sticks or not because if you've ever used voice recognition when you're texting somebody you know 50% of the time it gets it right 50% of the time you find yourself apologizing for the text which is just a bunch of gobbledygook because you didn't read it before you hit the send button so we'll have to see how that works but I think it's interesting that Unique is pushing the envelope a little bit saying you know what we're coming out with a drone that's very competitive oh yeah by the way we're building a voice commands to it. So take that DJI. So we'll have to see if that plays out over the long haul. The one thing it doesn't have, and I know a lot of people are going to pick on this and think it's the Achilles heel of the product, is it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. But to me, as a seasoned flyer, obstacle avoidance is important. I think for new flyers, it's super essential because <clears throat> it sort of gives you a perspective of what's coming up and it keeps you out of danger if you're flying near trees or flying near buildings. But for somebody that flies an awful lot, I'm always aware of where I'm flying and what the obstacles are around me. I've got situational awareness, and if I keep a visual line of sight on the quad, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of trouble. And if I'm flying a quad that doesn't have crash avoidance in it, maybe I don't take it into that big bramble of trees over there. Maybe I stay away from them and give myself enough distance away from the obstacles that are out there. So just be smart when you're flying, and you become the obstacle avoidance. So I'm not trying to make an excuse for why it's not in there, but I can tell you from an engineering perspective, to build in obstacle avoidance, the amount of horsepower that's needed from the collection devices, the sensors, and then the horsepower and the CPU to actually process all information coming in as streaming is, is a, a tremendous amount of horsepower, which means more horsepower, higher price. So the fact that it's not in there, I'm expecting to come in a little less expensive some of the quads that have that obstacle avoidance built in. And that's pretty much it. That's everything you need to know about the product at this point. I, I wish again I had one in my hands, but since they've announced it and they haven't talked about the release date, we'll wait and see when that happens. I can guarantee you, if they don't send me one to test, I'll pick one up the day the thing's released. I probably we shouldn't have said that because now they won't send me one to test. But Unique, again, if you're watching, get one over here quick and I'll put it up in the air and I'll give you a fair review of the product. But that's pretty much it. Now, if you've got any questions about anything I've covered, drop them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I've got a lot more information from the FCC filings and trademark and patent applications that I can give you detail-wise. But I wanted to get a quick clip out just to talk about it because, again, I love competition. So the fact that Unique was bold enough to come to Interdrone and say, you know what, we've got a brand new drone and here's what it looks like. And yeah, it's close to other drones in the market space, but we're unique. And you guys better pay attention to us because our engineers are working hard on our technology. And let's see what the consumers have to say about that. So again, that's it for today. I've got a link below where you can go check out their specs yourself on their website. Probably update it once they release the drone. If you want to click the link, maybe we get a couple of credits for buying the drone through that link. But I want to get this information out to you guys because I fly every day and I love this hobby so much. So when a new drone comes out like this, I just get giddy like a kid at Christmas, man. I can't wait to get my hands on it and start playing with it. And I know a lot of you out there are going to have questions about this brand new Mantis G. So this is the most information that I have at this point. And I promise you there'll be other clips coming where I update it with real information and physical showing you the drone and flying the drone and doing comparisons once I get my hand on it. So anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.